I've been asked to speak about why as Christians we should care for the environment and I've got six core reasons and about a minute on each of my core reasons and these reasons are explicitly Christian reasons for creation care and that's really important emphasis. If you think about it there are very few reasons strictly speaking why someone without religious faith should be passionate about environmental protection. The only real one is for the reason of self-interest. A polluted planet and climate catastrophe does not serve my interests because I want to drink clean water, breathe well, eat well and live well. That's a compelling argument. But all other reasons, including the beauty of the national world and any moral imperatives for creation care, come ultimately from a worldview of faith, faith that gives an account of beauty and a basis for morality. So let's dive in. Why as a Christian should I be actively engaged in creation care? Number one, because scripture instructs us that we humans are charged by God to be stewards of the earth. We've been given responsibility for caring for something that doesn't belong to us. And one day we will give an account for that stewardship. We read this in the early chapters of Genesis. The God we worship is the God who created the whole cosmos and it all belongs to him. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, says the psalmist. And he commissions us to rule over creation in a way that sustains, protects and enhance his work so that all creation will fulfill the, the purposes that God intends for it. Number two, scripture is clear that the creation reveals the creator. Just as when my daughter does a painting or when I bake a cake, there's been an act of creation and we understand that the cosmos is made as part of the self-revelation of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So unsurprisingly, we do not just find that the earth is useful to us, that it meets our needs for warmth and food and light and drink. Creation is also stunningly beautiful. From the rainforests to the frozen Arctic, from the Himalayas to the deep sea, there is a majesty and a beauty about all human and non-human life and about every natural landscape. And it leaves us in awe for a reason. God reveals his power and beauty through creation to bring us to his praise. The world exists for the glory of God. And because we were made for God's glory, we must protect what glorifies him. Thirdly, Creation care is also about our story of redemption and our understanding of the work of Christ. We know that we've been charged with stewardship over the earth, but our sin has meant that we've turned away from this responsibility. We have utterly failed through our own pride and selfishness. The evidence for that is absolutely everywhere and it's comprehensively catastrophic. Our fall in the Garden of Eden, the consequence of our sin, is brokenness. And that brokenness works three ways. Brokenness between the human, the, the people and God, and brokenness between the people and the other people, their horizontal relationships. And also Genesis is clear, a brokenness between the people and their relationship with the earth. And yet our story is not that God walked away, but the opposite. God comes to our rescue in Christ and dying on the cross, he doesn't just fix the relationship between people and God. His redemption is holistic. He fixes the brokenness between people and other people and between people and the earth. So to live out our salvation in the power of the spirit, in new relationship with God and each other and the earth, it's a holistic redemption. The Bible tells us Jesus died to reconcile all things to himself and that his work is to make everything new. Number four, creation care is about basic obedience to the commands of scripture from the lips of Jesus. The greatest commands are to love the Lord your God and to love your neighbor as yourself. 
Who is our neighbour? Again, the Bible is clear. Our neighbour is far more than the person like me or the person living next door. Our neighbour is the person not like me and who is not next door. My neighbour lives in the Maldives and his village has had to be abandoned because of rising sea level. My neighbour is in Bangladesh and she has lost all her family to flooding. My neighbour is in California and he cannot breathe because of the wildfires. My neighbour is the unborn child of the future who will read about what this generation did to the planet and will be utterly confounded as to how we destroyed our only home. And what is love if I'm to love my neighbour? Jesus shows us love. It is not a feeling or a romance. It is active and it is sacrificial. Love is sacrifice. So to love my neighbour, I sacrifice my comfort and my convenience to change my life, to heal the earth we share. Number five, creation care is a justice issue. I am rich and I am comfortable and I am protected in this specific part of the Northern Hemisphere. It is my footprint and my lifestyle and that of my parents and pretty much just me and my parents' generation that has brought on this catastrophe. As the climate breaks down all around the world, I will be okay. I have caused it, but I won't really suffer. The people who have not caused it are the ones who will suffer, and they are the ones who have the least ability to protect themselves from the nightmare. It is fundamentally unjust, and you read any page of scripture and you will find that God hates injustice, and his heart is always on the side of the vulnerable. Number six, lastly, our mission and our witness. The headlines are truly scary whichever way you turn. Climate breakdown, species loss, plastic pollution, air and soil degradation. Our non-Christian friends, colleagues and families are increasingly scared and some of them feeling desperate and hopeless. We know that we have hope in Christ. We know the power of repentance that leads to transformed living. If we fail to act, our credibility and our mission as Christians is horribly damaged. But if we act, we can form great partnerships with millions of non-Christians all over the world who are passionate to see change. And we can be gospel witnesses as we walk the talk and give the reason for the hope that is within us. So in a nutshell, what we're talking about tonight is non-negotiable. This is not an add-on to our faith or an optional extra. This is our faith.